Okay, Susan, let's take a look at that menu that we were talking about. First off, let me just show you what it looks like live, and we'll turn that back off. So all you do when you come in and, and somebody hovers over it, you're going to get the pointer, the little finger pointer, instead of the arrow. So we have that set. And then when you click on it, it just uh, gives a little bit of a slow slide-in effect. And actually, because I'm running, or because I'm, I'm recording right now, it's going a little bit slower than it normally would. And you can get rid of that effect totally and just have it appear without any sliding in at all. So let's just see how this looks. And what I did is the first thing I did is I went in and I turned off all the CSS just so you can see what we're looking at. And all I have here is this here is just a text element. So let's see, what did I use? I used a headline or subheadline. So I used a subheadline element, typed in the word menu, and then went into advanced and just found the icon for FA bar, which is, I'll just type it in here again. We type in bar. And it's this one right there. Um, so we just put in F.A. bar. I put a space in between just to set them apart a little bit. But that's all there is to setting up this element. And there's a little bit of JavaScript so that when you click on this element, it just shows and hides, just toggles this element right here. So the second element, you can make anything you want. You could have it be a headline element, a subheadline, a um, paragraph element. You could, well, you could do a text element. Let me, let me see here. Um, uh, what's the one I'm thinking of way down here? I mean, you could actually have it be an image. You could have it just be about anything you wanted to on a pop-up. Uh, text block down here, anything you want it to be. So in this case here, I just used a bullet list. I figured that was as good as anything else because inside the bullet list, what you can do is you can just treat it like any other text element. So we can come in and let's say we want to hyperlink this first one and we do that and we type in whatever URL you may want them to go to if they click on that. Or if we want to do a slow scroll to a section, we just simply type in scroll dash and then the data title of whatever that section row or element is and then it will just slow a scroll to it and then also you can set up the color of the link itself and you can tell it whether or not you want it to stay on the page or not if you're going to an external url whether you want it to open up a new tab or not i should say if it's going to an external url and then also if you want to set your universal text link colors you just come over here to typography and you can set them here and because this is a drop down i'd just say probably make it you know black or you know whatever color would work for what you're doing otherwise inside this element what did i do i set um, nothing. I set what the icons would be. Come on, Slowpoke. There we go. All of them are check marks. Uh, but again, like I said, you could just use a text element and then just a couple of carriage returns and put in a word or two of whatever that was and, and uh, just turn it into a link. You can make an ordered list instead of the icons. And otherwise, there's not much else you can do here. Text color, the icon color, that's it. The rest of it is handled by the CSS and the jQuery. Now we have this second section down here and it's way down uh, below this item. And so what we have to do with JavaScript is we have to tell this we want it up here higher. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we are going to figure out what the CSS ID selector is and that's right here. And so now let's go into our CSS and take a look at what we have to do. So here is that section. And what we're saying is we want the position to be absolute top 150 pixels. So what we're saying is we want to, this section to be up here 150 pixels from the top. So I will take off these two slashes, make it back live, and you see the section popped all the way up to the top. Now, what else do we want to do? Actually, let me put that back in just to get it out of the way for a minute. And what else we want to do is we want to style what we have in this element that is the actual drop down. So in this case here, I'm saying we want it to be position relative, 
with a Z index of nine. And what that does is it allows this element to be in front of any other element. So as you saw, when it was working, it went over the top of that image, over the top of everything else, just like any drop down menu should work. And in this case, then I also set the background to white, gave it a little bit of padding, and then put this shadow around the outside of the box. So let's turn that CSS on so you can see what it looks like in the background here. And then also, again, as I pointed out earlier, when you hover over the word menu, it turns it into the pointer. And that's what we have here. The cursor is set to pointer and important. Uh, otherwise, it wasn't going to work. So that's where we are. So all we have to do to come back in and finish this up is we have to click on this and we have to hide this element. But I almost forgot. We also have a little bit of JavaScript. So let's come up to our tracking code. And what do we have right here? It says simply this, when somebody clicks on this menu element, what we want to do is we want to toggle, turn on and off the other element, which was our drop down. So to set that up, you just simply come in, click on the gear, come down, grab out your CSS ID selector. This is again for the menu. And that goes into the top line of the code right here. That's for the menu. And then for the actual drop down itself, we would do the same thing. Come in, grab the CSS ID selector right there and come back into our tracking code. And you see here is temp list 80, 81909. And we are going to toggle it fast. If you want it to appear instantly without flying in like it does, like I said, it'll look better when you're doing it without recording at the same time. All you got to do is take out the fast with the quotes around it, and then it'll just instantly pop into place. So that is it. Like I said, what we'll do when we're done is we want to come in and hide this element. So we'll come down, we will hide that. This will automatically pop up into place. Let me make sure I got all my CSS turned back on, which I did not, I didn't think so. There we go. And now we will click on the save button and reload and test it one last time and did it reload at all let's try that again for some reason it does not want to reload but either way i didn't change anything so that is the effect at the end when you're done is it just comes flying in and out so if you got any questions let me know